What is strength? Some define strength as being able to throw the hardest punch. Some define it as being able to take the hardest punch. Strength in body, mind, or spirit. I see strength as someone who can throw the biggest rock at someone. Earth-based characters have been used as symbols and poster children for strength for years, and it's understandable why. Characters that can move the very terrain they stand on and throw it around like it's nothing. Characters that have seemingly immovable spirits just like the stones they lift with such ease. But when you peel back the layers of that tough exterior, what do you get underneath? That's what I want to cover today. I want to go over the characters that have Earth-based abilities and see what makes them so amazing. Not only in terms of powers and abilities, but also what makes them symbols of strength and where that strength comes from. So without further ado, this is what Earth characters are all about. In terms of powers and abilities, all Earth-based characters usually have one basic ability in common, this being the power to move Earth from the very terrain around them. Also, most if not all Earth characters have unbridled physical strength. Some people that come to mind are Boomy from The Last Airbender and Guillaume from Demon Slayer. I mean, you kind of have to be to be able to move the weight of some of these rocks that they move, especially if they're using the earth to move other things. I would say the best characters that use the ability to mold the earth would be Toph from The Last Airbender and Pixie Bob from My Hero Academia. Toph, as we all know, is the best earthbender in the world, not only beating up multiple earthbenders at the same time, but also creating a new form of bending, metal bending, which will get its own video, but moving on. Toph has not only shown strength, but also a lot of versatility when it comes to moving some rocks around. Some moves, which I am shocked a 12 year old can do. Like, bro, you haven't even learnt about Pangea yet, and you telling me you can move part of the country by just stomping your feet? Nah. In terms of Pixie Bob's Earth abilities, not only is she able to mold the Earth and move it around in large quantities with amazing control, but she can also make fucking monsters from the Earth. And not only monsters, giant Dark Souls looking ass monsters, all of them being able to move freely and do different things like fucking fly. I would argue that she has some of the best control in the entire Earth-based roster we'll be talking about, not only being able to create a large complex structure that is able to move and act like an animal, but being able to make multiple of them that all act on their own accord is some impressing stuff, and it's too bad that she doesn't get that much screen time or time to shine in the overall story. There is one more ability that I notice only a few characters with Earth powers can do, and that is the ability to make Earth from nothing. Most characters need to be in the midst of the Earth around them to move it, which is usually really easy since, you know, we stand on it. However, some characters are able to shoot Earth from their hands or use like their life force to make Earth. Best examples of this are Cole from Lego Ninjago and Soul from Black Clover. Soul makes sense because, you know, she's a magic knight, she has spells that allow her to turn her mana into earth, she can shape the earth with her magic, but she's also able to make earth out of her mana, making simple constructs and living golems. Cole, on the other hand, can just shoot rocks from his bare ass hands. I don't know how that's possible, but at the same time, it's also kind of badass, like bro could just load a rock into his bicep and shot put you in the face with that, and you can do squat about it. Also, it is just a kid's show, so I, I, I might just be looking too much into it. So those are the abilities that most Earth characters use and how overpowered they can be. But what about when you take that power away? What kind of people are these characters when you move past the physical prowess and the feats of moving the very ground we stand on? Well, that's what I want to get into next because I discovered something that ties all these characters together and I think it'll shock you. So let's get into that next. Now to get into the meat and potatoes, yum yum, after doing my research on not only the powers of these characters but also the personality of them as well, I found that they all have one characteristic in common. 
and that is the overbearing sense of responsibility. Let me explain. A lot, if not all, of these characters have a part of their backstory where something happened and it resulted of them having this sense of responsibility, whether it was within themselves or the sense of protecting others. And since these characters have overwhelming strength and extremely powerful abilities, it makes sense that they would want to take on that task. Here, I'll give you some examples. Going back to Toph from The Last Airbender, she was born blind and was sheltered by her parents thinking she was a freak. After meeting the Badger Moles and learning earthbending from them, she decided to run away and live on her own, giving herself that sense of responsibility to do everything herself by herself. She's hesitant to let other people help her and take care of her because she wants to be seen as someone who can take care of herself, not someone who needs to be sheltered. And she feels like if she gives in to that care, then she's just proving that she can't do everything by herself, therefore feeding into that sense of responsibility that she put on herself. Now, she does learn how to accept that help and care and lean on others when she needs it, but there's still that sense of independence that she still has. Another great example example is Cole from Lego Ninjago. Cole didn't have a mom for much of his life and his father was so deep in his work that he didn't have a great relationship with him either. So he also decided to give himself the responsibility of taking care of himself. Once he joined a team with the other ninja and grew bonds with them as brothers, he gave himself the responsibility of taking care of them too. I mean, he is seen as the muscle of the group, so it's a no-brainer that he can protect them from anything. The thing that stands out to me though is when bad things happen to either him or his brothers, his first reaction is to blame himself or put himself into positions where he's left with most of the burden. Like when Zane dies in Rebooted and he blames himself that he should have been stronger and secludes himself. Or like when they find Wu in Hunted and he gives himself the main task of taking care of him. Cole puts so much responsibility on himself that when things falter even in the slightest, he blames himself for most of it regardless of if it was his fault or not. I do believe that he has gotten better with relying on his brothers and opening up to them because it causes a lot more great interactions and growth within the other characters. Also, again, kids show. I could be looking into it, who cares? Uh, I'm just gonna rapid fire a few more of these examples here. Sol has this responsibility to protect Charlotte even though she is a captain. Terra from Teen Titans has a similar sense of independence that Toph has but ends badly. Pika has this responsibility to be a powerhouse since he is one and can't show any kind of deviation from that stereotype, especially after you hear his voice. Any fool who opposes our family will be answering to me! And Guillaume has this big brother mentality where he feels like he needs to protect everyone in the Demon Slayer Corps, and it burdens him to hear how many have died in battle. There are probably way more examples of this, so if any come to mind, leave them in the comments below, I will be happy to read them. Now that we've gone over both powers and characteristics, I want to go over my top 5 favorite Earth characters now. Just a heads up, this is my opinion, and a lot of it comes from nostalgia. Please feel free to put your top 5 in the comments below as well. So anyways, let, let's hop, let's hop into it. At number 5, it's gotta be Terra from Teen Titans or any other DC property for the most part. What I love most about Terra's character is that she shows us a darker side as to how brutal Earth characters can be. Her moves are a lot more simple compared to the others on my list, but what she can do with just basic rock throwing is really cool. And I feel like she has some of the best mobility in the roster with her rock surfing. Coming in at number 4, I gotta choose Blockman from Mega Man 11. I know this is a weird one, especially since it's a character that doesn't have much screen time, but I feel like with the time we spend with him in the game, he shows that he has some really cool powers and a lot of charisma. From how jumpy he is just out of the gate to how simple yet powerful his movesets are, then he transformed into a fucking robot, hell yeah. And even after you're done with the fight, the cool suit that you get after beating him makes him even cooler in my eyes. So yeah, definitely number four. 
At number three, we have Barbella from Skylanders Imaginators. Another one that's kind of out there, but I can explain. Barbella is a Skylander that I played a lot when going through Imaginators. She's a weightlifter that has a huge barbell that is made of stone, and she uses it to beat enemies and can even summon rocks when she does curls. So yeah, take that Eddie Hall, or Brian Shaw, or Skips. Skylanders is a game franchise that I love dearly, so not putting a Skylander on this list would just be a crime for me. Lock me up, my final meal is Sonic. At number two, I'm going to have to go with Toph. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Kaden, why is she your number two? Toph is so cool. cool. Who could be better than her? And also, wow, did I mention that you look cool today? I love your lashes. So stunning. Well, thank you for the scolding turned uh, into an extremely specific compliment. But yes, Toph is my number two. She definitely has the most versatility when it comes to Earth-powered characters using her earth bending for offense, defense, capture, and mobility. She also has a lot of good moments as a character, and she has a great overall story with her being blind and learning to open up to people. The only pet peeve I have with her is that she has some moments where she's just kind of annoying out of the gate, and I know it's just part of her personality, but some moments it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. And finally, we have my number one, and it's gonna go to Cole from LEGO Ninjago. Now, the reason I love Cole so much, other than the fact that I grew up watching Ninjago, is how they play into that sheer strength and muscle that Cole has. Being able to lift large objects and has some of the coolest feats in the show. Now, the biggest reason I like Cole is that he is the most human Earth user I've seen. I mentioned this in my characteristics segment, but Cole starts out as someone with a rough exterior and tries to act like the tough leader. But we learn later in the series that he acts that way because he was forced to gain that persona at an early age when he lost his mom and his dad lost himself in his work, leaving Cole to take care of himself. We learn that there are some things that scare him and how he's worried about others leaving him or getting hurt. Over the course of the series, he becomes more comfortable with his brothers and kind of breaks out of his shell, but when things get tough, he can't help but put himself in the front lines and act as a protector. And as a muscle of the group, it's a no-brainer to be on the front lines. However, he realizes he doesn't have to be that hard-shelled muscle head, and I think that's a really cool arc to have. Again, it brings so much more humanity to a character who we expect to be two-dimensional, you know? So, with all that, I can safely say that Cole is my favorite Earth-based character. So, if some of you don't know, I am a practicing character designer, and I wanted to give my own spin on an Earth-based character. So, after some mood boarding, developing, and sketches, I developed this guy. This is Rubble, a baseball player turned into an Earth Demon. I got the idea from the archetype of the big weapon character. You know the ones that kind of characters that have the weapon twice the size of their whole body. In this case, I wanted to give him a club, which is where I got the idea for a baseball player, and due to my small background in baseball, it was fun to design him. I made him look like a baseball and gave him the overall look of a baseball player with the uniform and helmet, and of course giving him the huge baseball bat of stone. I also gave him a rock leg to tie into his backstory, that backstory being he was a pro baseball player who had to retire due to a tumor in his leg, causing him to make a deal with a demon to get his leg back in exchange for his soul. I also wanted to tie into that sense of responsibility, which for him is the responsibility to carry his team as the best player, and tying his sense of value to his performance as the star player. In terms of power, I wanted to give him similar powers to Toph, but instead of launching a rock with his mind or his immense strength, he's able to smack the ground and with his bat, hit them with extreme precision. Yeah, he's pretty cool, and I'm glad we're friends. Hey, wait. So, tell me what you think of him in the comments below. I'm interested in what you guys have to say about Rubble. Maybe some head cannons that you can glean from him or his story?
overall, Earth-based characters are a perfect reflection of not only how tough they are, just like the substance that they are controlling, but also showing inside of the hard exterior and exposing what's inside. And sometimes, you might find a priceless gem inside. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun writing and editing and recording and losing my voice over this because I um, suck at reading. <laughs> I know it's been a long time since the first video based on fire characters, but I do want to keep this series up because it's really fun analyzing characters that have powers in common and seeing the similarities and differences they have and growing a newfound appreciation for character design and character writing. And I hope you do as well. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments below and also let me know what your favorite Earth-based character is and if there's anything I missed to mention. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, make sure you follow my socials in the description to stay updated on what and when I post, and also have a say in what I make next. I also post my art on there, so go give it a follow. Also check the end card for more videos. Thank you for watching again, and in the meantime, make sure to relax today.